important part of the shaving process is the weed whacker, right? Hi, everybody. Welcome to <laughs> Ramble Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to just say. I baited yeah. the trap and you fell into the trap. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is that if you don't do your legs with a gas powered weed whacker, are you even doing it right? <laughs> What's up, Ramble Fam? Uh, welcome to tonight's episode of Ramble Mancy. Um, <clears throat> we the shaving tips by John. It is very windy where I am. Uh, I just heard a huge gust. So if the power goes out, good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> good to see y'all. Yeah, it's twenty-one miles per hour. Oh Jesus! Anyway, if anything happens to me, it was. Just the snowstorm. I'm probably fine. I have lots of candles and blankets. <laughs> Love that. Um. So yeah, we uh are here doing our second to last Ramblemancy of the year. It's weird to think about. It really makes you think. I'm gonna stop doing that. It's the um, least rambly time of the year. That's actually objectively not true. It's the least rambly time of the year because there's no more ramble, Nancy. That's true. That is that is absolutely correct. Um, so before we get into tonight's episode, I guess we should probably talk about some stuff that's happening, like announcements and stuff, stuff. you know, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so first and foremost, speaking of break, uh, in case you have as yet not heard, uh, our break this year will be a little longer than it usually is. Uh, it will be starting after, uh, it'll be starting on the 17th. That is uh, immediately following Ramble Mancy. Uh, a week from today uh, is when that break begins. Um, and it will go through January 19th, where we will be back with Infinite Horizon at 6 p.m. Pacific time. On that day. So, uh, yeah. However, of course, as many of you may have heard at this point, um, you will catch some pre recorded content that will be streaming here on Twitch. Um, our fun little goblins one shot, uh, The Gift of Goblins, which the cast of which was just announced yesterday. And I'm very excited about it. We did, had our session zero yesterday, talked about everything, made our characters, and it's. <sighs> No one's ready. No one is ready for this. Uh, <laughs> no one is ready for this. I have, I have mm -hmm. next to me, I have next to me, my character sheet, written on this little note card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's anybody excellent. can manage to read that. Mm. I applaud you. <laughs> so I applaud uh, your effort. So yeah, um, and so the gift of goblins will be streaming, uh, here on this very channel at. Uh, on Monday, December 20th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So a little earlier than we normally do. Uh, but yeah, that will be here and it will be extremely chaotic. Like I guaranteed it before knowing nothing other than the people involved. And now having had our session zero, I super guarantee it. Um, things will be lit on fire. They will. <laughs> I, I'm not going to tell you who is going to be doing the lighting on fire, but... I get. I almost guarantee that something will be lit on fire. Um, <clears throat> it's it's so good that I have goblin emotes on my personal Twitch channel for this yeah. because it, it couldn't have been more timely. It's it yes, timely. very correct. Um, so yeah, so that's that's what's that's what's left. Um, we have our final third and final episode of Thunder and Blood this Wednesday at six p.m. Pacific time. Our Cyberpunk Red actual play. Um, that's so much easier to say than uh, than cipher system, sci-fi, superheroes, uh, space home bearing, brewed. homebrew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's cyberpunk red. You know what you're getting. It says it on the tin. Um, so yeah, uh, our, our third and final episode will be airing on Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. Pacific time. The previous episode is currently up on YouTube as of this morning. Um as Geek Outs has been kind enough to remind me in the chat, mm -hmm. In Too Deep will return January 25th, Tuesday, January 25th at 4.30 Pacific um, with uh, their second season. So, yeah, it, I'm, I'm very excited to have them back. We've been chatting with Colin, and it's going to be a fun time. I'm very excited. Um, 
so yes, we will we will once again have the dragon game on our channel. Um Oh, before I forget, and before any of you forget, speaking of Thunder and Blood, there is a limited time offer that is currently uh um, ticking away, and you may not even know it, but we have merch for Thunder and Blood, limited run of merch, and you have until uh, the end of, well, the end of the night after Ramble Man, so you've got, like, next next week uh, to pick these up in our merch store. You can do that anytime from now until... Um, 11.59 p.m. next Friday, a week from today. So, uh, Pacific time, I think. I'm pretty sure it's Pacific time. I think so. But Ooh. yeah, so uh, you can pick up that Thunder and Blood merch for a very limited time, and then it will be gone forever. It will disappear into the Disney vaults, and no, uh, it's just going to be gone. <laughs> it won't be in the store anymore. Um <clears throat> So yeah, so if you are uh, interested, mouse will in getting... have taken it, but it will have been Mitch's ghost, not the mouse. <laughs> oh wow! Callback. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can get that uh, anytime from now until uh, eleven fifty nine p.m. Pacific time, a week from today. So time is running out. Um, there are, there's a hoodie, there's two different styles of t-shirt, um, one of which I believe is a soft style that has, um, up to 3XL, I believe. It might be more yes. than that. I don't know if it's more than that. I think it's I up think to so. 3XL. So. Yeah, the soft style tees go up to 3XL and the, uh, the other ones go up to 2XL. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you can pick those up for one more week. Um, I think that might be everything. Uh, I do believe so. I have to say, those shades fit remarkably well on the John Blaine Chaos note, Matt. I am a lot. I am. I'm kind of a little upset at how well that works. It's very good. Uh, there's actually there is one last thing, and this is uh, another announcement that I will make very quickly, um, which is that patrons expect for there to be a marked slowdown of Patreon content during the break. Um, there will probably be minimal, if any, Patreon content. So uh, we'll keep you up to date as to, like, what is coming. But um, as of right now, it looks like we'll probably be taking a break from everything that we do so we can all, so we can all rest for a little bit. Uh <laughs> We're so tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I think ordinarily what we would have done is like planned content ahead of time and then scheduled it on appropriate days. But for now, I think probably what we're going to do is just sort of put a pause on the uh, on the content during our break. So, uh, yeah, that's will return better than ever in the new year. <laughs> bigger and better than it. Well, I don't know about bigger. I haven't grown since I was 14, but better, yes. Um, I've been the same weight for like three years, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's that's it, I think. That's, that's all I, that's all, that's the announcements. That's all, that's every single one. It's all of them. I, I, I definitely remembered all of the announcements, and I'm not going to remember something I forgot to tell you about hours from now um <laughs> so tonight mm -hmm. on ramble mancy we will actually be talking about john what are, we talk what are we talking about you know that's a good question i'm glad you asked um i definitely didn't just get out the fan to buy myself time no, um, of course not no, just like <laughs> me me do a bit on the stream to buy myself time to figure stalling? out what we're talking about stalling you think i am stalling and <laughs> i just looked i was just looking at the at the at the subtitles and it claims that i said superfluous which i did not say <laughs> there's a ghost whispering random words into your mic i mean i've said just it now, like but... 
yeah freeman freeman ceases talking and a ghost just leans in and goes anime titties <laughs> yeah so if you ever see that come up on the captions it was definitely a ghost and no other reason we don't need to ask any more questions anyway um 100 yeah, percent uh anyway um no i'm all blurry now i'm not actually stalling this time my camera is in fact sure just john a pain in the butt sure ah oh, yes yeah, no, it just, oh, oh no it's it such goes. it's such a it's oh wow really we've got i'm going through a tunnel oh my gosh francita hi good to see you francita. Hello. <laughs> hi hello hello um what a weird episode for you to <laughs> tune in on because we have vibing. zero topic it's we have like we're all ramble, no chill. Is that where we're at? I think that's I think that's where we're at right now. You know, I honestly like what I was probably going to ask everybody after I was done doing the part where I pretend not to know what I want to talk about, um, which is you know <laughs> on a good day about sixty percent true. I don't until I get to the end of it. Um, but given that I am currently buried in six inches of snow, um, or at least my house is, I'm not. There's not snow inside. That would be a problem. True. Um, but what's hit me with some winter stories, everyone, this, this YouTube <laughs> chat, just like, and this can be anything. This can be a funny thing that happened to you at the store once in the holiday season on black Friday. It can be a time that you went sledding and were hit in the head by a, a, a toddler at Mach three on a toboggan, which definitely didn't happen to me. Uh, you know, anything like just fun winter stories. What do you got? Hmm. Okay. I'll start with my toddler on a toboggan one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> that seemed oddly specific uh, to be just an example. A, a, a toboggan, if you will. <laughs> no, a toboggler is so much better. <laughs> That's anything, objectively true. Objectively better. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. All right. After I put a poll in chat for which one is better. Um, I don't, I don't, does that need a poll? I think <laughs> uh, you could include an, an option that's other and have chat suggest things. Other. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. There we go. Cool. Excellent. Um, cool. Thank you, everyone. Anyway, so this happened, like, uh, I think when I was in, like, high school, maybe, like, a freshman or, like, maybe in, like, eighth grade. I don't know. I was, like, I was, like, 13, 14 years old. Um and we had gone to this big sledding hill in my hometown. Everyone, I feel like every everyone has the sledding hill. You know the one. <laughs> um, except it had been a winter where it was particularly icy. Like we'd had a snowstorm and then an ice storm after the snowstorm. <laughs> and so this is like over over like Christmas break from school, and we go to the sledding hill uh, on one of our days off. My my mom, my brother, and I. And we're having a good time because we don't actually, nobody actually needs, nobody actually needs their sleds on this glorious day because there's ice everywhere. And so you just, you put on your snow pants and your coat and you just shoom, right down on your belly or your back, or whatever, or your butt, you know, and it's a, it's a good time. You go spinning out into the snow drifts at the end of the, the sledding hill and everybody just like having, having a good time. Of course, there's like a little kind of low spot where there's almost like a skating rink and everybody tries not to like plow into people in there um unsuccessfully mostly and so here i am having just stood up having slid down to the bottom of the hill um and i hear just this maniacal demonic possessed <laughs> giggling like doppler affecting towards me and i have enough time <laughs> to turn around to see this like this like five or six year old on a on a on a toboggan that's probably been greased with fucking ski wax or some shit rocketing down the hill at me right towards my ankles and i'm on ice i'm not going anywhere fast <laughs> so this kid just hits me full in the shins and i just ass over tea kettle like fully fully like flip and land on my back like Bleh! um and proceed to just kind of like rotate halfway so i'm now like perpendicular like laying long ways across the highway um of of, of people sledding down this hill and that was about the point at which the kid on the on the little like saucer sled um tried very hard to like swerve and so he hit me side on but he did hit me side on in the head and so i just Wee! 
he like spun out to the end of the uh to the end of the sledding hill and at the time i was having a very bad time but looking back on it it's very funny <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I think that's Perfect. that's that was the first winter story that came to mind. I, uh, nice. <clears throat> I just wanted to acknowledge Fancy this. So that's fine. It's Friday night and I'm drinking. Same. Um mood. Cheers. <laughs> um Toboglin. Yes, good. Toboglin. Yeah, Todd Boglin. Sense. Todd Boglin. I, like, I like that one. Todd Boglin <laughs> sounds like the name of a goblin. Todd Boglin. Okay, anyway, Todd, we're not... Todd Bo... Yeah, no, he's a sledding guy. Isn't... Nope, that thought's, hmm. that thought's gone. All right. Um, No, I, I was thinking about... So, a, in college, a group of my friends and I went sledding just randomly one afternoon. Um, We went to the, the sledding hill. Um, You know, you know the one. Uh, the sledding hill. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, the wintry location. Uh, yeah. That, that eldritch place that stretches between all hometowns. Mm -hmm. um, so we went there and it was, it was a lot of fun. It was just like a group of us just sledding. And, but at a certain point we're like, hey, there was maybe like six of us. And, and at a certain point where somebody was like, hey, what if we all went down together at the same time so we like got as many people on the long one of those like long sleds as we could and then they sort of like went slightly down the hill so we could stick another sled behind that and the person who is at the front of that sled went ass in one in one sled legs in the next one right and we just kept doing that until we had a whole train of sleds and then we went <laughs> <laughs> we went on the hill, and uh, it quickly did not go well. Like, very quickly. We just, we, like, as we started going down the hill, we didn't even get, like, ten feet down the hill. We started turning like this. Like, the whole train, sled train went like this. And then we all went over. Sleds went over us. And somehow, it was a mess. It was a mess. By the time we got to the bottom, it was just a just a pile of people every single one of us was on top of every single other one of us and it was just a pile at the bottom everyone just... had snow in their clothes somewhere like yep absolutely it was just a mess but it was so fun we were we were yeah like uh <laughs> we were just like laughing and like and then we went back to we when we walked back we, we walked back to the dorms um wet and cold and just miserable but like we got back everybody like changed and then we all like reconvened reconvened in somebody's room and like made hot cocoa and it was really fun it was a good time mm -hmm. classic <clears throat> post post hot cocoa move mm -hmm. yeah yeah my 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 like <clears throat> clothes didn't dry out for like a week it was not great Ooh. um yeah that's yeah. that's mine. That's my one of my winter stories. I saw um let's see. Todd Boglin is a regular human name. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it could be. <clears throat> the Sledding Hill TM, you know the one. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know. You know? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, that's just what Big Sledding Hill wants you to think. Hessen says, in my college town, we would use lunch trays to go down a 50-degree hill on the edge of the green. Okay, we also had the the, the, the calf tray sledding tradition, which was impressive because by the time we got to college, they had stopped using calf trays, but you could still get them if you knew where to go. You could Amazing. still get calf trays. I still have mine somewhere. One of my one of the guys on my who lived on my floor freshman year like stenciled our school's like uh, symbol on, and, like onto it, and, like spray painted it, and it, I still have two that he spray painted. That guy is cool. a youth pastor now. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh my god! I, I really you you have those people in college, right? That you went to college with, uh, who end up doing stuff like that, and you're just like. Him? You know? Him? <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm sorry, he's doing what now? Mm. Oh yeah, no, they're they're a they're a family therapist these days. You're like, what? Yeah. Oh no, this this person's a marriage counselor. I'm like, 
Really? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say. <laughs> oh, this person's this yeah, this person's a family practice doctor. Oh yeah. boy. <laughs> uh, fits, so that sounds like an urban myth you could still get calf trays if you move right it kind of was it kind of was because when we would tell we would tell the next generation we would tell the freshman class about calf trays letting they're like but i don't understand we don't have calf trays i'm like we do if you know where to look and it was this very mysterious thing that allowed us to feel <laughs> superior in the moment um mm-hmm. because yeah. we were 19 and had no other power in the world. Okay, I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> and had no other power. <laughs> ah, fair oh. reason for a number of things. We lied to children students. just to feel something. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Clearly, was Lucas was this one of the MP. Okay, like a little bit though, as someone who knew Lucas in college, you you were like you were you were <laughs> and are the person who knows a guy. It's because I knew literally everybody. I had no choice but to not know a guy. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like, statistically I, speaking, a... I knew a guy. <laughs> <laughs> statistically speaking, I knew a guy. Yes, because you, like, 100% of the campus. <laughs> People used to tease me. They're like, God, you just know everybody. And I'm like... I don't though, I swear. And then, then and then like I would be halfway through saying that and somebody else would be like, Hey Lucas. I'm like Hello. <laughs> You're like, all right, somebody else play the laugh track now. <laughs> When's it coming? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is a little bit how it went. Uh Newly Human says I've never ever sledded down the sledding hill in my hometown. But I did have to run up it at track practice a couple times. That sounds horrible to me. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I remember having to. I remember having to run up and down the bleachers for cross country practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's well, that's rough. Matt says, um, "Yeah, Matt said, grew up in a semi or flat semi desert, no sledding hills, but there was, there was uh, some sand dunes like thirty minutes away. That's that's Ooh. that's Matt's connection. sand dune sledding is pretty dope. I've done that too. Like you go to I the or- you go to the that. Oregon coast and there's some yep. s- pretty solid sand dunes They're down there. Really and, yeah, fucking crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I know. You start running down that if you're just running, you start picking up so much momentum. You start looking like a cartoon character with your legs just like. <laughs> brrr, eventually, it just catches up with you, and yeah. you just like roll over. Eventually, N- Newton's laws come into play, and you just. Yeah. yeah I'm sorry, cool. center of gravity. What? Amazing, <laughs> amazing. It's easier when you're shorter, I will say. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm doing oh, center of gravity. Yeah, absolutely. I I I. I ate I ate sand. For those of you who are not familiar with 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 me as a human being. <laughs> oh, are we doing a size comparison to the door? Because that's unacceptable. Yeah. That shouldn't be allowed. No. Nope. It I like really should I'm I like I'm I make up for it by being a toothpick. Uh, John, where'd you go? I, I love the matching yeah, exactly. plaid. All the plaid is really working. There's a lot of a lot of a lot of plaid on plaid on plaid here. That's right. I didn't even notice the blanket till now. Oh my. Oh my. Did you decide who to tell where to get the calf trays? Um not really. Um because when you're 19 and you know something that somebody else doesn't, you're going to tell everyone because <laughs> you want everybody to know that you know something they don't. Um it's a little bit part of being 19. Um yeah. Yeah. so yeah no it wasn't exciting at all i make it sound way more exciting than it was but it's just like they just sort of stacked them over by like on one end of the of the calf where they just like kept them i don't know Um, that's a canadian tuxedo that lucas is wearing (laughs) wait what is (laughs) the flannel i think isn't the canadian tuxedo like denim I thought it was that's denim. I, I thought that's what I heard. That's too. what I always understood was the Canadian I left my tuxedo. Canadian tuxedo in my car. Yeah, my, my jean jacket. <laughs> yeah, because there's jean everything, you know, aka there's... the bisexual uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing denim down to my underwear. 
I don't that know sounds that, horrible. <laughs> Denim. This woman just took a drink. <laughs> the chafing is unimaginable. Mm. If you think that's bad, you should try denim socks. Ah! <laughs> what is this curse that you have brought upon this stream, Freeman? Uh, uh. Just doing my cryptid duties. <laughs> uh, I was going to joke, de- <laughs> joke about denim hats, but those are a thing. They yeah, are. they are, yeah. And denim shoes. All you have to do is just ask the early two thousands, and then some... uh-huh. listen. I've watched. I've yeah. watched. I've watched Paramore music videos. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. So I don't, I don't understand this. At all. I'm given incredible. to understand that this is incredibly accurate. Well, so my sledding story is is uh, terrible, and and um, right. just never do it. Uh, just. <laughs> I didn't have a sled. I, we have a state park here and I would go through the state park and I would um, go to the places where there were trash cans outside and I would take the lid off and I would whisper under my breath, I'll bring it right back. And I would leave and never bring it back because what would happen was I would go down these really terribly steep hills and end up spinning out of control and losing the lid and, um, and then walking away. And um, they've never caught me, so... Not yet. But yeah, trash can lids. A, a very interesting way to sled down a hill, for sure. Um, yeah. I haven't been sledding in when years. You start now, going I, in circle. <laughs> now I really want to go sledding. See, you don't have an excuse, John, because you live a place where it snows more than once every five years. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to do it for all of us, John. You have to go sledding when for I, all of us. We just had a snowstorm today, so if I go sledding this weekend, then I will take pictures. <clears throat> Good. Mommy, what's that 29-year-old man doing out there in the snow? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my gosh. Whoa, wait. Jolly Old Love Nicholas says, uh, my grandpa has had a, or my grandparents had a giant metal Coca-Cola sign, probably three feet across that we used for sledding. That's amazing. What? That's amazing. That's so fucking cool, dude. Oh God. A giant Coca-Cola sign. That's so the thing that I remember that my friend had when I was, when I was a little kid in Montana, um, was like a sled that. It was basically like a toboggan, like the body of it was like the toboggan, right? Where it had the runners and everything. Um, mm-hmm. But then it also had like a, like a steering wheel where like it had like a front ski that I actually don't think did anything other than it was like purely there for like placebo, right? Like to make you feel like you were doing mm-hmm. something. Um, but yeah, like, but it had like, it even had like... Um, what do you what should we call it like the place like a place to put put your feet basically if you were on the the one on the front a place to put your feet so that you could like hold onto the steering wheel and like turn i don't know it was uh yeah that I, I just thought that was cool i didn't have i didn't have a point to make about those i just thought it was interesting yeah. um also hello koala aqua bear I have really bad allergies right now. Also, hi. Oh, I hope your allergies get better. I was having an allergic <laughs> reaction earlier, I think. I don't know what to because, like, I'm still drinking this wine, and that's the only thing that I've had. But, like, I was, get, I was like, all, like, red and, like, around here. There's, like, a weird pinching slash, like, burning feeling right here. I don't know, man. I'm still – I didn't stop drinking the wine, which is the only thing it could have been. So, like, that should tell you something about me as a person. <laughs> like, mm, am I having an allergic reaction to this wine? Don't care. John, is that facial hair? Yeah, I actually haven't shaved for two full years. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the reality is I don't think I've shaved since, like, Sunday? Red wine is just like this that. Is almost a week. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it takes me a week to look like I'm in middle school. <laughs> That's about my my uh, my facial hair game. Yep. So. It's hey hey John, you know what's really fun? Being at a bar yeah. and like not getting carded when you order stuff. 
Okay. All right. No shit. Okay. All right. All right. Here's a here's a thing that happened to me. Here's a thing that happened to it's, me. It's 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 really cool. And I'm explaining this to you because I know you don't know what that's like. So um... no, it's literally <laughs> never happened to me ever before in my life. Um, it has I, I think it has happened one time. We were in Florida at like this outdoor bar, and I was with my mom, my stepdad, my brother, and all three of them ordered drinks. And I no wait no I did get carded that time. No, I did. I did actually get card at that time. Colin didn't, and then I did, uh, which is what happened this time, this last time as well. Uh, I'm a, but we we took my great aunts out to dinner over our Thanksgiving break. Um, I went down to see my dad, and and you know, um, and Colin, my brother, was there. Uh, you know, the, the the disembodied voice from from my old apartment where I would open my door on stream and yell, it's the Toby Kalechi. And then you'd hear from the other room, it's the Toby Kalechi. Yeah, that that was Colin. Um, so, uh, yeah, we all we took my great aunts out to dinner and dad orders a drink and, and Auntie Marion orders a drink and Auntie Shar orders a drink and Colin orders a drink and um, I'm like, just water for me. And so, you know, she zips off and grabs everybody's drinks and uh, comes back with them and starts taking people's orders. And I'm looking around going, you know what? That all looks very good. I think I'd like a drink. And I'm like, could I have, um, have a white Russian? And this exact thing happened. Like, yeah, I see your ID. <laughs> <laughs> like she she went yeah and started to turn away and I was like no and then turned back <laughs> um so my my brother who is three and a half years my junior was not carded but i <laughs> having shaved that morning that's such was. a that is such an older sibling mood though i feel like i can i say authoritatively as an only child um that um every friend that every friend that i have who is like the oldest sibling has had that kind of thing happen where they're like their their younger siblings everybody always assumes that they're older Mm -hmm. yeah no 100 percent. like when i went on my first call when i went on my college my college visit to lula was so wild first like um the the admissions counselor assumed that Colin was the college graduate to be, or was that was the college attendee to be, and he was fifteen years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Walked right past me and held his hand out. I was like, "John, it's good to meet you. I'm Alex." And I'm like, "All right, <laughs> am I a joke to you? <laughs> am I a joke to you?" <laughs> So yeah, that's that's kind of happened our whole life. Colin that, looks. Oh no, sorry. I'm 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 just. I'm looking at. I'm seeing. Uh, there's a story that I want to tell, and it's a great story, but I don't know if it. Admitting to crimes on the internet. Uh, right, right. Minor, like minor crimes. It's fine. Fuck it. I'm gonna tell the story. Um. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> Because it's a it's it's a great story. It's one of my favorite college stories. What a day! Um, <laughs> it involves a birthday, underage drinking, and a unicorn. Um, you tell. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so I was is like I think it was my junior year in college, and uh, it was my friend's birthday. He was turning 21, uh, and so he had gotten um, – he we had we had tried to get a group of people together uh, to go, you know, to, like, a place or, like, a restaurant or something like that so that, you know, we could just – just a really low-key kind of thing. But most people were busy, so it just ended up meeting me um, and my friend, whose birthday it was, and one of our other friends who um, – like was was already of age um she was older than us because she was she was a transfer student but she came in the same year that we did so like that's how um uh we became friends um but we so we went we we got together in the evening we went to this little like bistro place in in town and 
I, w- I was like, well, this sucks because like I'm the only one of us of the three of us who's not of age. And my friend who was already of age uh, was like, was like, well, just order something anyway. And if they and maybe they, they, they might not card you. And if they do, then you can just like pretend to look for your ID and then say that you left it and then just order water or something. And I was like, OK, sure. And I felt like pretty nervous about it. But I was like, whatever. OK, so I go. We get there. He orders a Guinness. It's his birthday, um, and so it's so they they're like, oh great, it's on the house, uh, and then so she orders something. I forget what she got, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'd like a a mudslide, and she's like, okay, uh, can I see your ID? And I pretended to look for my ID, and I was like, oh no, I left it, uh, and I like made a show of like having left my ID, and then she looks at me and she goes okay be honest with me i was like oh shit she knows she caught me she caught me in my lie i'm gonna whatever she 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 knows she looks at me dead in the face she's like are you an undercover cop (laughs) the struggle that i had to like maintain composure in my face was And I was like, no. She's like, because you know you have to tell me if you are, which is, like, not true, by the way. It's not true. Um, they don't have to do that. They don't. Because um, <clears throat> you have to tell if you're a cop. <laughs> and, and, I, and she's like, okay. She's like, well, in the future, make sure that you have your ID on you, okay? Because, you know. And she goes. <laughs> and, like, she walks away. And I, like turn <laughs> to everybody and the other two people at the table both of them had this exact expression on their faces <laughs> so I think that's how i would have reacted i would just be right? like so anyway you may recall that i said that the story also involves a unicorn uh so we were there for a while we just hang we were hanging out she brought us our drinks and we were like we were just hanging out and talking and whatever um, so after a little while, we saw like kitty corner to this bistro that we were at. There's a, there's a bar. Um, now my friend, the for the context of the story, it's important to know that my friend's birthday is very close to Halloween. Um, so <clears throat> they were having at the bar across the corner, uh, on the corner, uh, they, uh, they were having a Halloween party because it was like, I think Halloween was like on a weekday or whatever. Um, and so like they were having as bars do, they were having their Halloween celebrations the weekend before. Um, so we watch all of a sudden, as I like turn and look out the window, I, we watch as, um, as a person in a powder blue tuxedo and a unicorn mask crosses the street. Um, and and walks into the little like bistro where we are and everybody seems to know this guy everybody seems to know who he is they're like hey hey you know like hey mike how's it going hey you know like and uh you know he's walking around taking selfies with people with the unicorn mask and whatever and he comes over i don't remember how he gets started talking to us he starts talking to us at our at our table and i don't remember how it gets started but somebody at some point makes a mention that it is our friend's birthday. And he's like, wait, it's your birthday? He's like, okay. And then this man in the unicorn mask proceeds to lead the entire restaurant in a chorus of happy birthday to my friend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, presumably, no, we did not know this guy. Um, but... So anyway, like at one point he did take off the unicorn mask, and so we like we saw his face. Fast forward a few years. I'm living off campus uh, for the summer. I'm living in 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 a ha- an apartment for the summer. Um, been living there for we were living there at as, at that time for a couple months, um, and we had like other roommates in the apartment who had lived there before us, uh, and one of them. Like, I made a sudden connection in my mind. I was like, wait a second. 
and so our our roommate he came he came in one one day and he and he was like asking he came into our, to our room and was asking us a question, and I was like, hey, I got a question for you, man. I've got kind of a weird question. He's like, okay, I've got maybe a weird answer, and I was like do you now or have you ever owned a unicorn mask and he's like yeah actually he's like it's in the, it's in the hallway closet and i was like i was like do you remember a few years ago do you remember a few years ago when uh you came into this place and there was somebody's birthday and you were you were dressed in like a unicorn mask and a blue tuxedo he's like yeah yeah i remember that and i was like that was us. That was me and my. <laughs> He's like, no way. And so yeah, it was this ridiculous thing that I'd been living with this man for two months and did not make the connection. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't make the connection. This was years later. Mm. Like, did not make the connection between. Um, it's actually a really cool story behind it. As as it turns out, apparently, so like the weekend, but the week before that, his mom had died. And his mom had, like, loved unicorns. Like, he even had, like, a unicorn tattoo on his forearm and sort of in memory of his mom. And so, like, he was, like, just devastated for, like, for that week. And then finally one day he was just like, you know what? I'm going to do something to sort to honor my mom. It's Halloween next week. He, like, rented himself a powder blue tuxedo, bought a unicorn mask, and did that. So that's what that was, what that was about. So, like, yeah. It was. Wow. Anyway. That's that's fucking wild, <laughs> and also a, a story in which Lucas explicitly does not know a guy. <laughs> in fairness, he did not go to our school, so he was he was just a resident of the town that our school was in. So mm. he was just a guy. He was just a guy. Ellie, hello, hello. We're sharing wild college stories <laughs> um and talking about fun winter shit that's happened to us oh and hey it's rose hey rose Hello, friends Ooh. yeah we're rambling well tonight we're it's 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 winter and college story hour um i think i started us off almost an hour ago by going hey what, what fun winter shit has happened to you and then talked about the time <laughs> that i was hit by a raging toddler and a toboggan so <laughs> <laughs> sorry raging, raging toddler, toddler. On a <laughs> is the best phraseology i think i've maybe ever heard about anything so <laughs> amethyst lucas we will discuss this later good i i mm. i'm sure you know i know you know where this happened and i'm sure you know who i'm talking about every single person involved so mm-hmm. um for sure 100 <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah um yeah. Anyway, that was that was my story. I was very excited to tell that story. I don't think I've ever told that story on stream because it no. involves me lying about my age and drinking under age. I'm wagging my <laughs> fan at you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every one of us just takes a thoughtful sip. Mm. Uh, Indeed. Mm-hmm. Quite. Really mm. makes you think. Okay, I'm going to stop with that. Yes, quite indubitably. Or maybe makes you not think n- enough. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> it is rather the point of, of alcohol, is it not, is to make us not think. In Ugh. this essay, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's... I think that might be, like... It's certainly not the weirdest college story that I have, but it is one of the most, like, in-depth weird college stories because like most of most weird college stories it's like a weird thing happens and then it's over but this was one where like years later there was a follow-up which you know yeah mm-hmm. no there's no follow-up to the time that there was a beach party in the uh in in brand my, my, my freshman year in college that just happened in yeah. the dead of winter mm-hmm. it, I, it, B1 East just decided to have a a beach party complete with like kitty pools and everything. Truly wild. Mm-hmm. College is not mm-hmm. a real place. I just no, want everybody to understand really that. Not. It's not a real place. Um <laughs> there were people who would dress up in like polka shit and then march around the dorms on Friday nights <clears throat> playing accordion and 
a whole bunch of other just random assortment of instruments and they just march around the dorm doing that. I've been to something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. No, uh, we, mm -hmm. it's totally not the same though. It's like not a college story. I didn't really go to college, so I don't have college stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Community Dude. college is different because you, you, if you go to a community college that is in your location, you go there for your classes and then you go home. You don't have, you don't cultivate the kind of the same. It's, it's not the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So. You do mm -hmm. make connections. Cause like I've also been to community college True. and you do make connections, but they're different. They are. And they're. Yeah. Yeah. They uh. are different. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They are interesting. Lucas, do you remember, recall the hugger? I recall something that could fit that description, but I don't know if it's what you're thinking of. But the hugger, <laughs> the hash slinging slasher. Uh, um, yeah. The walls will ooze green slime. Oh no! Wait, they always do. Their that. sophomore, or junior year, there was a guy running around collecting hugs. I do know that there was a guy our sophomore year, like at the very beginning of the year. Who, I don't know about collecting hugs, but he did one time in the cafeteria just like ask me if I if I he's like can I hug you? I'm like I don't know this person, and I was like I guess and he's like okay great. And he's like I hope you're having a great day, and I'm like thanks you too. Can I get to the cereal now? <laughs> that dude got kicked out of school and like uh, within that month for brewing moonshine in his room. <laughs> How did he man? What? I don't know. I th I think the point is that he didn't manage it, which is why he got yeah. kicked out. <laughs> right, right, right. Jesus just, Christ! Like, that process. Anyway, won't ma I won't. Never mind. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, anyway, <co> moving on. <laughs> college. <laughs> college is not real. It's not a real place. I'm telling you. Listen, we were. We all, everyone just. We all just had a collective and... psychosis for like four years, <laughs> four or more years, and uh, yeah. I mean, closet wine is easier and cheaper. I don't know why you'd go straight to moonshine. Crazy it's, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Christian school, man. We go hard, I guess. Listen, that same year a girl got kicked out for, for like, try, making LSD in her dorm. So, like. <laughs> Hot damn. That same class, same year. The only reason Whoa. I know about that is because uh, my friend, actually the same friend, not the person whose birthday it was, but the same friend from the story uh, was an RA. <laughs> that is. So I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm just fine. now. Many years <laughs> later, like ten years later, I am just now putting together the irony of my friend who is an RA telling me to lie about my age. <laughs> in order to... <laughs> Also, just like her presence in all in in both of those stories, I just like she's the main she's a main character. Like she like, truly something. is. Like if you know this person, you know she is actually just the main character. She's a main character. Um, <clears throat> I don't know wow. what you're referring to, Amethyst, uh, as the hugger. But yeah, um, the Ellie, hugger. Ellie said I was very boring in college. If I wasn't in class or at home, I was in the library reading. Everything but what I was okay. This is this is an important point. Thank you for bringing this up, Ellie. This is the thing that we've John and I and, and one of our friends have been talking about recently, where we we're slowly coming to the realization where like the more people we talk to, the more we realize <laughs> that our college experience was fucking nuts. Because more often than not, I talk to people and they're like, Yeah, I don't know what you're I don't know. I just went to I just went to class, then I went home. I'm like yeah, no, I'll be like, I'll be like, yeah, you know that thing that happens to everybody in college? And people are like, no! Like, <laughs> I'm like, the what? Are you that okay? Is madness. Yeah. That sounds like, like madness. You're like, that doesn't happen to everybody? There wasn't somebody who just went around throwing bikes down a hill randomly? Sorry, Amethyst brings up a very, an excellent one. Uh, were you there when the union building had to be evacuated for a mysterious package? Yes, <laughs> I was, was the, there. And I know whose package it was. It was a friend of mine. It was a mysterious package that was ticking. Yeah, a mysterious oh ticking God. package. And so, like, the, the context for the story is you have to understand our school is, like, well-known for its music program. Like, well-known for its music program. So, like, so there's, like, a package that arrived 
at, at the at the at the post office at the student post office on campus and it was ticking and so the the whole union building had to be evacuated for a while it turns out it was a metronome and the metronome had somehow turned on yep <laughs> <laughs> and I I know the person whose package it was. It was a good friend of mine. <laughs> and when she wow. told me, I literally I went to her room later that day. I was like, "Did you hear the union got evacuated for like some like there was like a bomb threat?" And she was like, "Yep." Oh, oh. And she like showed it to me. She's like, "It was this." I was oh, like, "Wait, no. what?" <laughs> yep. Oh, so no. so the. the the happy ending of that story, she did eventually get her metronome. So, yeah, good, good. <laughs> uh, Those gnomes living in the metro. <laughs> God damn it, Freeman! <laughs> I don't know what to. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Next coming in the uh, in the Metro Exodus series, Metro Gnome. You know, it works. I'll I'll just I'll see myself out. It's a working. I don't title. have enough left for this. this? <clears throat> we'll just... Who hasn't Bye. evacuated a building? Good night, everyone. It's been it's been a good show, great show. I mean, are you going to Narnia or something? I mean, if you're doing that, bring me back some of those weird treat things that Aslan gave the kids, because those things are fucking fire. Are you talking about Turkish um, delight? Yeah, I, I don't know, maybe. Because <laughs> that definitely was the witch who gave that to. Yeah. Yeah, well, give me some of that then. Um, wait, did John? The John actually spell, left. Okay, cool. Um, stuff. The witch poisoned that, right? To like manipulate. So. Oh, okay, it was just like really. Man, like, listen, delicious. I didn't. I didn't read the books, so. I didn't. I listened to them on tape or CD or whatever. I listened to them. Oh, hello! I didn't I was, see you there, you John. Don't go in the, the closet. You already came out of there. Um, <laughs> You, damn it. <laughs> Did you see Mr. Tumnus? Tap the mug. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep up bringing Narnia. <laughs> Narnia Freeman's just is... desperately trying to cling on to something <laughs> to keep us. I need something. I need something to keep myself from going crazy, guys. I was I was looking Tumnus? for some I was looking for something to like fun to bring out of my out of out of out of the closet with me, but it's mostly just like there's not a lot of like interesting clothes in there because today was laundry day and they're all drying downstairs and mm -hmm. uh, there's a box of ostomy supplies which you know I I um you know those are certainly a thing I got like, this is the bandage I use. This episode of Ramble Bancy is show and tell where we. Um, <laughs> Um, oh, has I some... certainly always have show and tell items. I know you do. One of these days, one of these days, for for April Fools or some shit, I'm just gonna have like half a dozen people stashed in my closet to come interrupt me during the show. Like it's I just I want everyone to be prepared for that day. You can like clip this, hold me to it, whatever. Consider this uh, foreshadowing. Hessen said, "Oh, funny sad story. I had long hair down to my mid mid back, and I was at a barbecue. The person lighting it." out on uh on oh. way too much lighter fluid oh no no and sparks no, landed in my hair no it was not no. it was not hurt but lost most of my hair after i was done removing the damage oh i'm so oh, sorry no. oh no i accidentally lit someone's hair on fire once uh. <laughs> yeah somebody does that yearly at christmas at luther What? I, I think you were all expecting me to elaborate on this story, and I wasn't planning on it. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Littlest Drummer, like, same hat. During during our, our, our college's, like, big Christmas program, there's, of course, at, towards the end of it, you know, we, we all of the choirs come in with candles, and they light can a candle during one of the songs, and at the end, they blow them all out and sing a song in the dark. And then... The lights come back up and we sing the big exciting last song and that's the end of the show but of course every single year there is at least one person who forgets to put their hair up before the candle number and then they've got like you know collarbone length hair just hanging down here and they're holding the candle right here and all of a sudden everybody smells burning hair oh man hair is surprisingly flammable like you wouldn't mm -hmm. think it is but it it's gonna be like all the oils or something it, yeah 
it's yeah it's fast too mm-hmm. very fast mm-hmm. yeah we're in good tinder stores <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But if if you, what am I? What? Where am I going with this? <laughs> How are we gonna dig ourselves out of this weird hole? Uh, <laughs> no. Tonight on Ramble Nancy, can we save ourselves from our own bits? <laughs> I'm going to you know, pretend I didn't say that. I really want to at some point. It's it's difficult because there's not really, like, when we get, we don't really get snow here. When we have gotten snow, it's been nice. But that was, like, maybe three years ago. That was an, a decent snow. And most of the time, it's just been kind of uh, slushy. And then it freezes overnight and becomes a hazard for everybody involved. Uh, <laughs> but I really want a really decent snow, like a thick snow and a outdoor campfire that yes. would be the right like that's the thing like bundled up of course and like maybe a bottle of mead yeah i've got you covered i can send you some snow mail right yeah send it by snow mail yeah i'll just i'll just you know i'll just and put that... some in a paper envelope and mail it your way that'll work yeah i think i think that will um <clears throat> You know what? I'll let it be a surprise. You can find out on your own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, Freeman, you'll get a very you'll get a you'll get your envelope full of snow here in a couple oh, weeks. I do love surprises, I do. <laughs> I thought John was about to mail Freeman some mead. That would actually be pretty great if I did that. I actually have a little bottle of mead under my bed for a rainy day that I got recently because this is mead weather we but... we live we live in the pacific northwest i mean it's it's always a rainy day <laughs> yeah that's true i try to make it seem like it's a once in a while thing but yeah every day is a rainy day we say this every for a rainy drinking day. mead <laughs> no <laughs> well, i'm not same. drinking mead every day that'd be saving it for a snowy day there you go jolly old up next list yeah a... there you there go, you go. That's that's i've never had rare never had meat or mulled wine i have actually had i have actually had mulled wine i've made mulled wine for myself a few times oh nice get like something that's kind of like kind of full-bodied and then uh pour it into a pan and add a bunch of mulling spices and then put it like pour it through some cheesecloth afterwards and drink it while it's warm and so good i had some mead that uh someone i knew made on a boat they were out on a boat i guess being pirates or whatever they're just living their life out in the water and they made this mead um and they brought it back and there was a little beach get together and uh lost my boots lost my boots and uh it was some good stuff it was really good (laughs) really good stuff don't know where my boots went still this is an incredible story into the wine probably (laughs) there's pirates freeman lost his boots oh the pirates took it but you know, <laughs> the hazard of of uh, meat on the beach, <laughs> made by pirates. <laughs> <laughs> that there was there was no part of that story that wasn't interesting. Um, so, gosh, it was an interesting one. <laughs> it had to be there. Key <laughs> cowards. <laughs> I also never went to a Connor Ren fest. I didn't. Not only did I grow up in a little, literal desert, I grew up in a cultural desert. Oof. Listen, I lived. I lived uh, in what could be politely be described as um, central to everything and close to nothing. Um, we had uh, my my hometown felt very self important that we were the biggest most important town for miles around and that's because we had like 20,000 people. <laughs> oh, 20,000. That's a uh, real big. That's that's yeah. small. Oh. <laughs> I say living in a town of 8,000. Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, 
it's it was it, it's a little bigger than that at least but uh yeah same weird. same attitude though like same attitude here though like no shade <laughs> definitely shade um but like our it's... town is like psh, the biggest town in the county and they're just like we're very cool and i'm like we're very cultured you... here i don't know how to tell anybody who lives here that they don't actually live anywhere um so yeah Eight thousand is big around here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting in a I'm sitting in a, a metropolitan area of like two and a half million people, two hours up the road from the place where I grew up. So, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> then again, I am I am sitting in one of the two like major metropolitan areas in this whole chunk of the country. So, yeah, yeah. <sighs> um. My job, I get to work with municipal codes for really tiny cities, like a three-digit population. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. No, Jolly Old Nick's list wins. Yeah, Ellie said I've never had oh. mead or mulled wine. My friend made some moonshine for us, though. So I actually also haven't had. Uh, I've had mead, but not not mulled wine. Um, there was some. There was a time, like back in college, I went to. I went home with uh with my girlfriend at the time and her dad had gotten some like mulled wine that we were, we were gonna make and then we just didn't and there were at least five other times during that pe- that like period of several years where i was like offered mulled wine and somehow never ended up with it so like at this point i'm starting to believe that it doesn't really exist and <laughs> uh, people are just lying to me. So I think that's the only reasonable assumption to make here. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I have actually had moonshine a couple of times before. Um, I'd say mm-hmm. I want to say once in college. And then another time another time after i graduated visiting a friend both times it was very good hmm. mm-hmm. yeah i would like to i would like to at some point try some because it sounds like a thing that i would like yeah i think you'd i think you'd dig moonshine and the, the fun thing about it is that it comes in just the wildest flavors <laughs> it's true <laughs> whatever whatever person was making it wait what are, sorry which thing are we talking about the moonshine oh never mind i've had that I, okay. I, was thought, I thought we were still talking about mulled wine. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, moonshine with the cinnamon yeah, stick. Yeah, that's actually, I believe apple pie moonshine is in fact a flavor of moonshine that I mm-hmm. have had. Me too. Yeah, I think so. I... A whole like cinnamon stick in there, like I said before. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I remember this one time uh, in our college town, there's like a festival that happens uh, in the summer, um, like a Norwegian heritage or like a Nordic heritage festival. Uh, And at like during the events of the day, we were like out and doing stuff. And then later on that day, we had a bunch of people over and it was near my, near enough to my birthday that we just sort of smashed them together. Um, and so there were some, uh, there was some leftover alcohol. Um, and like a couple of days later, friends of mine who hadn't been able to come when everybody else was there arrived and brought like just huge watermelon, just a huge watermelon. And we weren't able to, like, eat all of it. So we decided to go um, to go tubing but during during the day when they were there. But they brought us the watermelon. And they're like, we don't know what to do with this. And so we cut it up, like, like, diced up the watermelon and put it in a bowl with what was left of, like, the alcohol that we had. We just sort of – and one of the things was, like, a little mason jar about like that of – uh, I think it was like cherry flavored, like moonshine. Oh my god! Oof. 
And, like the whole it wasn't full, but like uh-huh. we put the rest of the mason jar <laughs> to the bowl <laughs> with other stuff. By the time when we came back, um, I like tasted a piece. And I was like, oh, that is the booziest piece of watermelon I have ever eaten. It was so much. It had been sitting there marinating for hours. That is a jungle. Oh my God. That is a jungle melon, a jungle juice melon. A jungle melon. Yeah. yeah. Almost jungle, but not quite. Cut holes into the watermelon and let two bottles of liquor soak into it. I mean, Boozy watermelon. Basically, that is, what, yeah. that is basically what we did. <laughs> but, yeah. And then you can get like one of those dispenser things and like pop it in the bottom and just like dispense like little mm-hmm. um, slushy. Oof. That sounds delicious, shit. actually. It said IDK how, but my dad showed up after working in Alabama, <clears throat> not surprised, uh, with jalapeno moonshine and it was spicy and did in fact taste a bit like jalapeno. Hmm. And oh, I, hmm. I'm. I'm with... Hmm. I heard jungle juice and was immediately catapulted into a sense memory. Oh, oh me too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Really, me too as well. Did everybody have, was that just like the collective experience? Did everybody I just think so? Have I mean, jungle juice is. Freeman, I feel does... like yours is the same as mine because it was, you were there for that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. See, but what you weren't there for was the aftermath where, like, somebody had spilled right, some right, in right. my room, and I didn't know, and for weeks afterwards, I was just smelling pineapple. Oh, that's terrible. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And I finally found it. I finally found where the spill was, and I wiped it up, and it was fine. But, like, whew. <laughs> NSFW, <laughs> yeah, yeah. NSFW watermelon and conventional unconventional piercing story that involves lighter fluid. I am curious. Mm-hmm. Also, kind of afraid. Yeah, a little bit. Sweat, sticky floors, loud music, too many people. I mean, that about that about <laughs> does it, littlest drummer. Yeah, that's that's yeah. about. Yep. I feel mm-hmm. like that is what the phrase "jungle juice" evokes. <laughs> Yeah. What's the what's the tagline for the end of this one? Raging toddlers and jungle juice like for this ramble. We need to start like doing clickbait titles for our ramble man and see uh, episodes for YouTube. I agree. You know? I agree with that. Like Oh no. Little uh, term, I'm so sorry. Dated a frat guy in college, so mm, that I was a choice. Loved, I always loved when um when I would see one of my RAs going out like junior year to do stuff and he'd always be like very very like cagey like oh yeah just you know going out and it's like we all know that you were going out to do to do frat shit buddy you don't have to you don't have to like be cagey or cryptic or like mysterious about this we all know that you're just gonna go get super drunk it's fine like (laughs) we're all ostensibly adults here um (laughs) we are all technically speaking in the eyes of the United States government adults here. <laughs> yep. Um, I may not have many college stories, or I may not have college stories, but I have a barracks one. When I was still in training, I was in the Great Lakes base with the corpsman in training. We were not allowed to have any alcohol in the barracks. So my corpsman friend used a syringe to inject vodka into oranges. The watermelon reminded me of this. Oh. That. Yep. That is some seriously next level bullshit. Mm -hmm. I'm very (laughs) into that. I love that. Uh, That is that is the (laughs) most that's the most deconstructed screwdriver I think that has ever come to be. It's a post it's a postmodern screwdriver. (laughs) That's good. Fuck you. (laughs) I'm gonna gonna try that. I'm gonna get some oranges. And some vodka. I'm gonna do this next week. I'll, and I'll see you all two weeks after. I don't know what's gonna happen, but John's fine. Um <laughs> I, I love when John has the moments of and now John has sunk below the camera. And, and John is on the floor. Yep. 
Ah, sweet rug. Sweet, sweet rug below me. <laughs> me well these past rambles. Here's to many more in the new year. Thank you, John, for taking care of me. <laughs> now playing a rug. What is happening right now on this stream? I'm losing it. <laughs> Holy Lost shit. It. The rug know. has grown a personality. <laughs> Fans and I don't know why Postmodern <laughs> Screwdriver got me so <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Next time, next time we're... Oh, God, my hair's fucking everywhere now, too. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that got me so bad. But anyway, oh my, I'm actually like, tears running down my face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Internet. Anyway. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Next time we hang out in person, I'm giving you a, uh, a sur or like a, an orange that I have injected full of vodka and then passing you a postmodern screwdriver. <clears throat> Amazing. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to scroll up now. <laughs> uh, I saw the end of this. I stopped part of the end of the story and now I have to read the beginning. Yeah, I'm looking at it now too. Uh, uh, More fashionably late. Uh, uh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, I can't go on with the rest of this show now. Well, um, not after reading that story. <laughs> like, I, Matt, I understand why you did a U turn and drove away seeing that guy two years later. If somebody did that in front of me, I think, like, I would, I would, I would avoid them for the rest of my life. Oh, holy shit. Oh, geez. I wow. have <laughs> sympathetic pain in my everywhere. What? Oh my goodness. That's not a thing that I processed. Um, <laughs> Little Strummer wow. says, one of my professors always, uh, always drank out of a red Solo cup every class, and we always tried to guess what was in there, and we were pretty sure he was just drinking during our class for the entire semester. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if he was teaching freshman paideia, then you know, probably, probably needed it. I mean, yeah, like that's. I don't know. I feel like I would be, I would be less blatant. Not because I was trying to hide it, but like, like a flask or something. If I'm a college professor, then like by necessity, I'm not like, I'm not like a college junior. I don't need to drink out of a red solo cup. Like, yeah. listen, I understand that, like, <laughs> that teachers, regardless of level, are paid, are, like, underpaid, but, like, I'm pretty sure you can afford a flask. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, no, you can, I mean, you, you've got like, a terminal like degree, a flask, you can buy a flask. A flask is not going to, like, broadcast <clears throat> what you are drinking any more than a red Solo cup would, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. yeah Rose says, I'm so fucking glad I never did high school parties. Yeah, I was never I never mm -hmm. I never I never was any part of that in high school. Me neither. Um and frankly I wasn't in college either. I got a, I got up to some just fucking wild shit in college, but uh, most of it was without a drop of alcohol, if I'm being honest. I think that's I think the, the stories, worst part. That's the I think worst the stories. Part. Yeah, I know. This you would think like, wow, this must have happened when everybody was drinking, right? And the answer is no. God, Most I wish my... <laughs> <laughs> it would have explained like, it so much better. Like we said, collective psychosis, like right. Although, in fairness, I think we can mostly just describe the early twenties as a collective psychosis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one's early twenties is just the experience of being drunk on one's emotions for about five years. A little bit. Yeah. 
See, oh. I didn't. I I can't say that I like went to parties in college because I didn't. I went to two and I was miserable at both of them. But like, I did like. It's funny because like, there's like in terms of like word uh, terms, right? Terminology. There's going to a party is a different thing than partying, but partying mm. could encompass going to a party. Yeah, you know. But like that's right. not that was not like my thing. I went to like two college parties. Both of them actually were in the same year. That's not true. Nope. There was three of them and they were awkward as fuck every single time. Like I just did not know where to stand. That mm-hmm. was the problem. I didn't know where to stand. I didn't know what to do with my hands. That was just I still don't know what to do. I don't look, don't think about it too hard. You'll never know. Um but like <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, they were just awkward. I just like I just I didn't know anybody there because none of the people that I knew were going to the party. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a weird time. Mhm. Right, little strummer uh, says I stopped after I turned 21 and could go to bars and now I can't, now I have to cast parties after that which are fucking wild. Yeah, no, always cast parties are always a good time. Um and uh i i remember like when i was going to a bunch of cast parties for like musicals and stuff in high school it was all it was direct like during the height of of guitar hero and the rock band era and so like inevitably there would be a whole bunch of people playing like the full like drum kit three guitars and vocals because it was it, it was a bunch of musical uh it was a musical cast so everybody would just be going fucking ham on rock band Yep. Those are good times. And just way too much Godfather's pizza. Way too much. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Newly Human said, I did my early 20s and my mid 20s instead, and that did not make it better, just more legal. <laughs> 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 That's fair. Um,. We played a lot of Jackbox games or certain drinking games. Yeah, there you go. There was the time that some of our friends in college played the Archer drinking game, and that was ruinous for everyone involved's health, except for the person who they were trying to get drunk, who they discovered was incapable of getting drunk. That's actually not how that happened. That's actually <laughs> oh, yeah? not how that happened. Those are you're conflating two different stories. Mm, okay, you're conflating two different stories because I was the one who was trying to get him drunk. Because I had never seen it before. I'd heard rumors mm-hmm. that he had done it when I was not present. And so then I was determined to get him drunk. My mistake, because he, does, he doesn't like the taste of alcohol. So, like, I was like, well, I can make you some, I can make you some, some drinks that are, like, high alcohol content to low flavor of alcohol ratio. Um, and so I did that. My mistake was trying to match him drink for drink. Because how right. that ended was I got drunk and he did not. <laughs> so mm-hmm. so that uh, was a mistake. I made that mistake. It was. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like getting me drunk is actually like uh, you just kind of think really hard about alcohol in my direction. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, newly human. Hold on a second. What? <laughs> Back up. Okay. Do college kids everywhere play stump, or is that just ag schools? A game in which you drink heavily while throwing hammers in the air, catching them, and hitting nails into a tree stump. I I I, I second Amethyst Cat Lady's question, which is, how did you not die? <laughs> I think that was about me, but that was directed at me. I think, but. Oh, uh, I mean, it, it applies equally to both, though. I think I share that question about both situations. Oh, I did. To answer the question from my side, I did stop eventually because I did get drunk. But I also kept – when I get drunk, I do keep my, like, ability – like, cognitive abilities. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I lose my inhibitions, but I keep my cognitive abil- abilities. And so I was, like, I was able to reason, this isn't working. I should stop. Um. Okay, hold on a second. So I have heard of 
this game, Newly Human. I have heard of it. I think I've even seen it played, but not in college. I mean, I, I was in college, but that's not where I saw it played. So, interesting. Mm. <laughs> Country kids are built different. <laughs> that is who this was. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, more ready access to hard hats. <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny, John. Hard hat. You think hard hats were involved? <laughs> Absolutely not. That's I just ex- wanted to be the, be the OSHA representative for this, <laughs> this stream. Uh, uh, nope. Well, now are you sure this game is OSHA compliant? God, I hope not. No. Um, <laughs> um, there's some said we played one where you sit in a circle and count to 21. Then once you do that, the next person after 21 makes a rule for uh, one of the number i.e. instead of seven you have to make an animal noise and then you count again oh my god that's incredible see i like playing i like king's cup i know a lot of people hate king's cup i love king's cup it's so fun Mm -hmm. it is yeah because one of the best one of the best rules like if you get the card that allows you to make up rules i'm not going to explain the rules to king's cup mostly because i don't even remember them but also, because I don't mm-hmm. feel, but there's a card that you get, and if you if you have the card that allows you to make up a rule, my favorite rule to make up, it is my favorite, is my go to every single time. You have to drink if you verbally remind somebody else that they broke a rule. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you can so you can you can point and be like, mm, right? But if you verbally remind somebody that they that they broke a rule, then you also have to drink. And that's mm-hmm. very fun. <laughs> as I love doing that. <laughs> we um, call this one the snitches get stitches rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> what are hard hats? I um they're these things that you wear to parties so that you can party hard. The party hard <laughs> How many, how many worn by the person who was objectively not partying the hardest? Yeah, uh, one of our friends actually made actually, he stole a hard hat from one of the restoration or renovation areas, uh, on our college, and he called it the party hard hat. Again, worn by the person who, well, that's not entirely true. He did eventually, like, he just didn't go, he just didn't go to bars, but like. He didn't go anywhere, but he would he would drink. Usually, I, I if I remember correctly, usually worn by the designated driver. <laughs> the party <laughs> hard. I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> uh, I have fond memories of, of of the party hard hat being worn around. I think stored in the ceiling too. <clears throat> Uh, at least I never actually went out and did anything until I was stationed in California. My friend took me to see the sunset cliffs. Uh, being from uh, from Florida, this was my first time seeing a clip. I ended up falling down one. Holy shit. Nothing broke but my pride and my phone I landed on. Oh, no. Oh. When my dad was a kid, they played chicken, shoot an arrow straight up, and whoever stayed the longest won. Him and his siblings, cousins, and friends would jump on a slow-moving train when it passed through uh, their backyard and then jump off at five miles outside town and when it was moving at speed by the sand hills I mentioned earlier. I asked him, were you scared? And he said, no, God protects the young and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yep. God. <laughs> Sometimes wow. I wonder how different I would have been if I'd like stayed in Montana longer. Mm-hmm. Stayed in rural Montana longer. I, I didn't no, need to you, put that. I, I didn't, didn't need to put the qualifier. You didn't need to say rural Montana. There's no <laughs> other part of Montana. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. The largest city in Montana is a couple hundred thousand people, and then when you go outside of that town, it ends abruptly. It just stops. Like that city <laughs> just stops. It doesn't like peter out into the country. Like it just stops. There's a town, and then there's a not town. Billings, Montana. It just ends. <clears throat> like... That's what they put on the. Um, that's what they put on the sign on the way out. Mm-hmm. 
my favorite game from the middle of nowhere is star tripping. You focus on a star while spinning in circles, then a friend shines a flashlight in your face and you wipe out spectacularly. I have played that. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a hundred percent played that as a like many, like not many times, but but a fair number of times as a child, like at, at friends' houses for like uh for like bonfires and stuff like that. And, you know, you get bored and somebody spins round and round and round and round and round looking at a star up above them uh, and then somebody like shines a flashlight on them and you get several people doing it all at once like right next to each other and then one person shines the flashlight and then you just wind up in a big a big a big <laughs> tangled puddle of people uh, hmm. the things that we do uh, in rural in rural or towns to uh, to entertain ourselves mm-hmm Um, well, everyone, it is time. It is the end of our stream. We've reached the end of our stream. No, that's it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's all. Yeah. Um, we're gonna raid. We're gonna raid a few times because they're they're doing their their season finale of uh, Parliament of Owls, um, featuring Ooh. our very own Draconix. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jake. Kyle DMs that, right? Mm-hmm. And Jake will be here and, on our... Oh, and I was going to say, and Krug... No, Krug is in uh, the other one, in uh, Court of Corvids. Mm-hmm. Krug is mm-hmm. in the other one, but yeah. Jake Kyle, who will be here on our channel, GMing our holiday special set to air on December 20th at 4 p.m. PST. The gift of goblins, in which we rule of lore for a holiday special, give you the gift of goblins. <laughs> <laughs> we announced the cast uh, linked there in the uh, in the Wool Nightbot command is the tweet. Uh, you can see who all is in that. It's a great group of people. It's going to be wild. I'm so excited. Things will be lit on fire. I guarantee mm-hmm. it. Yep. Yep. I wild. guarantee it. Not because I'm going to do it. I probably won't, but somebody will. It's probably going to be Dare. Um, (laughs) It's probably going to be Dare. I will probably poke holes in things. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, uh, there is that. As Geek Outs, was it Geek Outs? I think Geek Outs pointed out. Um, You should, uh, oh, no, it was was actually Rose. Uh, You should join the Discord, because that's um, kind of the place where things happen. Um, It's also the place that you can go when you inevitably miss us over our break over our month-long break um because that's where we'll be we'll be in the discord we'll be hanging out um either in voice chat or in text chat we'll be there just hanging Mm out um before we go i i have to remind you once again that you know some days i just want a shirt that reminds me of all the good times you know the good times being out in the badlands of a practically post-apocalyptic california and i just really want a thunder and blood shirt you know you want to get the thunder and blood shirt (laughs) and you want to get it um soon because uh the i was gonna make a joke about apocalypse of shirts but we're not gonna go there um because it's a limited offer limited run um this this shirt these these merch items will be in our store until a week from today, 11.59 p.m. Uh, on December 17th, um, you can get Thunder and Blood logo shirt. Um, they're super cool. The logo is dope. Designed by actually our very own Nico Derpenduin, who is not currently here. But uh, yeah, Nico designed that logo, and uh, it's very, very cool. So um <clears throat> A cyberpunk dystopia shirt. I can get you an I Heart Texas shirt. <laughs> um, you know, uh, as tempting an offer as that is, I somehow don't think uh, people will understand the uh, many levels of irony with which I would be wearing it. Um, but uh, I appreciate it nonetheless. But yeah, you can get that. Um. Th- uh, for a limited time, at uh, at midnight, on the morning of the eighteenth, it will be gone, forever, into the ever, ether. Ever. 
Um, so yeah, you can uh, you can get pick that stuff up there. Um, Ellie, thank you so much for the subscription. Um, so yeah, uh, check that out. Um, just as a reminder, uh, next week, a week from today, after Ramble Mancy, we are going on our winter break. And there will be no programming between the 17th and the 19th, except for the Goblins game, which will air on the 20th. So, um, I don't know why, but for some reason, the, like, the first words that came to my, my mouth was like, get us while you can, folks. And I, that's not appropriate as far as like... <laughs> Anyway, I'm quickly losing my ability to focus on anything. So I think we're just going to go ahead and raid. Um, here, let me raid. set that. Raid. Um, that's not how you spell it. Hold on a second. Give me a second. There's like six unnecessary letters in Q times. Um, perfect. All right. So we're going to go raid Q times. Go give them all your love um as always bully drac uh because that's just what you do mm -hmm. um uh oh apparently they've got follower or subscriber only chat on is what i've been informed by so anyway um at the very least, we'll just go and, like, hang out and be present. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for coming and hanging out. Uh, we will see you hopefully on Wednesday for the conclusion of Thunder and Blood. But if not, we will see you the next time you decide to come roll with us. Good night and good zone, everybody. <laughs>